There once was an island in New York named Revis. Now there is a gardener in Central Park. Can Sauce Gardener be the next Darrell Revis? That question answered today on Locked On Bearcats. Our Locked On Bearcats, your daily podcast on the Cincinnati Bearcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Bearcats your first listen every day. It is Friday, TGIF, May 6th, 2022. Alex Frank here with you, former sports director of the University of Cincinnati's student-run media organization, Bearcats Media. Made a lot of connections with those who cover the team professionally and members of the athletic department, bringing all of those experiences here to Lockdown Bearcats, my passion for the Bearcats University and the city of Cincinnati. I cannot wait to get back to Ohio this weekend, get some Skyline Chili, Grater's Ice Cream, and La Rosa's Pizza. Talk about a triple play. Anyway, can Sauce Gardner be the next Darrell Revis? That is a legitimate question because I think he is going to be the best cornerback the New York Jets have had since Darrell Revis. Certainly better than D. Milliner, whatever his name is. He got drafted, I believe, 2013. Yeah, that did not work out. Anyway. I, just, I, I sometimes like to be funny and take shots. Um, anyway, so Sauce Gardner is heading to New York. He is going to have the opportunity to make more plays than he had this past season at Cincinnati and in 2020 because the NFL is a huge step up from where Sauce Gardner has played, the American Athletic Conference. Sauce Gardner will get targeted. He will get targeted because you look at the AFC – East, you look at the receivers that he will face in that division. Stephon Diggs, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell. Do not think that teams are just going to completely shy away. They're going to think, oh, is this guy really as good as he thinks he is? Does he really have that sauce to him? I guarantee you that teams will target him. I guarantee you Brian Callahan, when the Bengals play the Jets this season in New York, Jamar Chase is going to go after him and they are going to target him. Sauce Gardner. I'll say it this way. They will target Sauce Gardner. If it's Jamar Chase on him, they Joe Burrow will throw to Jamar Chase. If it T. Higgins is on him, Joe Burrow will throw to T. Higgins. Did you see the Bengals receivers against some of the best corners in the NFL last year? If you did, you would know that they will probably have the same game plan for Gardner and the Jets this year. So Sauce Gardner is going to get his opportunities to make plays. Now, Darrell Revis. Darrell Revis was the best corner in the NFL, and it wasn't even close for years. He was Richard Sherman before Richard Sherman. Darrell Revis in 11 NFL seasons. It's hard to believe he only played 11 NFL seasons, and he kind of just quietly retired. So Darrell Revis went to the Pro Bowl seven times. He was four times first-team All-Pro, 29 career interceptions, 139 passes defended, and... I can go further and say that he had five seasons of three or more interceptions, 31 passes defended in 2009, four seasons of 15 or more passes defended, shut down playmaking corner, helps when you play for one of the best defensive-minded head coaches of the 21st century in Rex Ryan. Go to his college days, though. He was targeted in college, so much so he had four interceptions his sophomore season at Pitt in 2005. He finished with eight. Sauce Gardner may not have been a tar as tar targeted as much as Darrell Revis when he was in college. But don't forget, Darrell Revis also played in the Big East. There was a lot more talent in that conference than there is in the American Athletic Conference and was when Sauce Gardner was there at Cincinnati. Sauce Gardner is going to get targeted more in the NFL, which means he's going to have more opportunities to make plays. And I also think playing for Robert Sala the head coach of the Jets, is going to help. Here's a guy who was a defensive coordinator. Here is a defensive-minded head coach. When the Jets are good, and I do think they are going to be better this year than they were last year, or in 2020 for sure, or any previous year. Heck, they haven't made the playoffs since 2010. That was Darrell Revis's fourth, fourth season. I think Sauce Gardner is going to help revitalize this Jets defense. I, I look at this Jets defense right now, and I see him, 
I see Jermaine Johnson, and I see a, a, a team with a defense that, quite frankly, Marcus May in secondary as well, I see a defense that can get after teams. I really do. I look at the AFC East, excuse me, and I see, yes, Buffalo's high-octane offense. You're probably not going to slow them down. I see Miami, a team that's going to be hard to defend because they're going to be so they're going to have so much speed with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. But I look at New England, that offense doesn't scare me. And I just think when you look at Robert Sala, the head coach he is, the competitor that he is, and you see Sauce Gardner with how hard he works. Darrell Revis fit New York. Shut down corner, big time player, best defensive player in football. Sauce Gardner fits New York because of his personality. You heard Dan Horn on yesterday's show reference Deion Sanders. And maybe Sauce Gardner's not that, but he certainly has some personality to him. When he steps onto the field, he is he is there to take you out of the game. And he did that frequently at Cincinnati. So can Sauce Gardner be the next Darrell Revis? Potentially, if teams actually do target him, which I think they will. They're not going to be scared of a rookie corner, are they? I don't think so. And when hit when the ball is thrown to him, we are going to see his ability to make plays. Because he was so good and so shut down and shut down esque in college, we didn't really get to see. It kind of feels like what he does when the ball is thrown to him. You know, he didn't have that many pass breakups or passes deflected or intercepted. We're going to see if he's able to be that kind of corner in the NFL because he's going to get more targets. And I look at Sauce. And the other receivers he's going to face this year, Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, like I mentioned. You're going to face some solid receivers on the Steelers. George Pickens, who the Steelers just drafted. I look at the the Browns and Amari Cooper. I look at the NFC North, who the, the Jets play that division this year, and I see two studs in Minnesota, Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen. I see Green Bay as some decent wide receivers. So you're going to get your opportunities, and then you'll play one NFC team, which this year for the Jets will come from the West. I believe that to be Seattle. Yes, it is Seattle at Seattle. So, I mean, you could be going. To, I, I mean, you could be facing DK Metcalf. I mean, Tyler Lockett. I mean, there's so many options. Sauce Gardner is going to have his opportunity to make an immediate impact. I mean, eventually, I can talk about could Sauce Gardner be Defensive Rookie of the Year. That's how good this guy that's how good this guy is and the potential he brings. And because teams are going to think, oh, he's not. I mean, is, is he really as good as the stat show from college? If he is, great. And teams will quickly realize that. But they're not going to they're not going to think that right away and just completely shy away from him. He's going to earn his respect in this league. Because he's going to face great receivers, and he's going to be targeted frequently. Coming up, Desmond Ritter. There's one thing that he's going that he's bringing to the Atlanta Falcons. You heard Dan Horn and I talk about it yesterday, and I'm going to tell you why so many great quarterbacks have brought it to the teams that they play for throughout their NFL careers. That is coming up, but first I need to tell you about Bill Bar because this is the time of year that I have pretty much given up. Actually, no, I am sorry. That is not the live read. Excuse me. We're done talking about New Year's resolutions because, damn it, summertime is coming and you're going to need some food on the go, whether it be for your family, vacations, whether you're going to a baseball game and, I mean, gosh forbid, the Reds probably will put the money that they get towards raising the hot dog prices. So where else are you going to go? Well, you're going to go on your summer vacations. So throw Bill Bars in your bags, your kids' backpacks. Make sure that everyone has a built bar so you are fueled for your summer adventures, including the puffs. They're covered in 100% real chocolate. They're only 140 calories. They come in crazy flavors like banana cream pie and even churro. I love me some churros. Built bars only have 4 grams of sugar and net carbs and 17 grams of protein. You compare that to a candy bar which usually has 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. I just got a serious churro craving. Is there any Mexican place here in Macon, Georgia? I don't know. I'm going to search that. 
Anyway, go to built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. I am very seriously now craving a churro. I haven't had churros in, I think, two years. I think the last time I had a churro was at a place called El, Mas El Maison in um, West Carrollton, Ohio, for a, a, our very good family friend's birthday. Oh, those were so good. Anyway, as soon as I saw those the menu, I'm like, yep, that's what I'm ordering for dessert. Alex Frank here with you, Locked On Bearcats, May 6, 2022. Uh, by the way, Russ Heltman was supposed to be on the show today. He's now going to be on Monday show. So much happening, I got to move guests around. But you know what? When you make history and have nine players drafted, a lot is happening. And there's a lot of guests I want to try and get on. Hopefully they can. Uh, major, major thank you to Dan Horn. Major thank you to Aaron Freeman, host of Locked On Falcons. So, so much has happened this week. And Desmond Ritter, I've spent a lot of time on him, but I want to touch on something that Dan Horde told me yesterday and told all of you listening to yesterday's episode and today's. Desmond Ritter's going to bring stability to the Falcons. I think that's the one thing, in addition to his no-limits mentality, that he is going to bring to the Falcons. Ted Nguyen, who is a NFL films analyst, or I'm sorry, a film analyst for the Athletic. Uh, he recently tweeted this about, I just realized I don't follow him on Twitter. That is a mistake. So Ted Nguyen, whose film breakdowns are tremendous, tweeted yesterday saying this, if you're the Falcons, unless Ritter is a disaster in camp, which he shouldn't be, he should be the starter. Even if Mariota is resurgent, it's hard to trust his injury history. You have to begin to find out what you have in Ritter, even if the sample size is small, unless you think the Falcons are playoff contenders this season. Now, there's two points there that he brings up. Number one, yes, Ritter should be the starter because Mariota does have an injury history. And as I've said, Mariota has a ceiling. Then he says, unless you think the Falcons are playoff contenders. Well, I'm here to say that if the Falcons are playoff contenders, why would you start Marcus Mariota, who has a ceiling? The Tennessee Titans in 2019, the last time Marcus Mariota was a starting quarterback in the NFL, the Titans went from 1-0 to 2-4, and and they couldn't score a damn point in Denver. You couldn't score a damn point where it's the altitude is thin, so you should be able to throw the ball, but they couldn't. And what happened in that game was Marcus Mariota was benched for some guy named Ryan Tannehill, and the Titans ultimately ended up playing for an AFC championship that year. So... In addition to Ryan Tannehill, there are a there is an extensive list of quarterbacks who have come into the NFL wherever they've been drafted to and have immediately provided stability. Or in the case of Drew Brees, for example, they've come from other franchises and stabilized the franchise they then went to next. Classic example, Drew Brees. 2006, the Saints had one playoff win prior to his arrival since the 60s. Or whenever the Saints came into existence. Now I'm wondering. So the New Orleans Saints, and Drew Brees is one of my favorite non-Bengals players. So the New Orleans Saints, who now are one of the NFL's best-run franchises, have been in existence since... 1967. So from 1967 through 2005, one playoff win. In Drew Brees' first year, they won a playoff game, 2006. And the Saints were consistently from 2006 through 2020, one of the top offenses in the league. They made the playoffs in 06, 9, 10, 11, 13, 17, 18, 19, 20. Nine times in 15 seasons. Of those nine times, they were division champions in 2006, 9, 11, 17, 18, 19, 20. Seven times won the division in 15 years. Pretty damn impressive. And the other times they didn't win the division, the Falcons won it. And actually they did. Or the Panthers. Matt Ryan with the Falcons provided stability. Look at Joe Burrow with the Bengals. Within two years, they're in a Super Bowl. Now, I do think that there is validity to the 
discussion and premise of, well, can the Bengals repeat that and show that it wasn't a fluke? Heck, I think they can. They've gotten better this offseason. More on that in segment three. So I look at Peyton Manning and the stability that the Colts had. People love to criticize Peyton Manning for never being able to win the big game, for not being able to win the big game consistently. Yeah, the Colts from 2003 to 2009 had the following win totals in the regular season. 12, 12, 14, 12, 13, 12, 14 again. So that's seven straight years of 12-plus wins in the regular season. That's pretty damn hard to do. Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes, they've won, what, 12-plus games the last four seasons. Also very hard to do. I look at Phillip Rivers when he went to the Chargers. The Chargers then made the playoffs in, in 2000 once he took over a quarterback. They won four straight division titles his first four seasons, went back to the playoffs in 2013, and the Chargers were always a competitive team. Yes, they had some down seasons when they were 4-12. and 12. Yes, they had some seasons where they just missed the playoffs and they had a lot of injuries, but the Chargers were always that competitive team. I, my my former co-host Zach Freeze always joked to me that Philip Rivers was the guy that you'd watch on Sunday afternoons, and he threw a late game interception with the Chargers down seven, and at the five yard line of the opponent's territory, and then sixty minutes comes on. That's what he would joke to me about. But at least Philip Rivers brought that competitiveness to the Chargers that they had struggled to have years prior. I look at Matt Schaub when he went to the Texans, two straight division titles. I think about John Elway and how competitive Denver was and relevant they were for the better part of 15-plus years. Derek Carr and the Raiders. Russell Wilson in Seattle. Only missed the playoffs twice. Drew Brees, I already mentioned him. Um, and, of course, you can probably come up with a, a number of other quarterbacks that immediately provided stability for their franchises. Josh Allen in Buffalo. Um, potentially Justin Herbert now again with the Chargers. And I think Desmond Ritter can bring that to Atlanta. I think that's one thing that was not appreciated enough in Cincinnati. People are going to remember Desmond Ritter. Bearcat fans, you listening to this podcast are going to remember him. I am too for him leading to the, for him leading the Bearcats to the college football playoff. That's all fine and dandy. But I'm going to also remember him for turning this program around and backing up a surprise 11-win season, his rookie season, freshman season, and doing it again the next year with a team that was not as good as 2018 and then going undefeated in a truncated season in a COVID year and so many challenges and him and clamors for him being benched. And then he just went on a ridiculous tear to end the season, three straight 300-yard passing games in the final two regular season games and conference championship. And then last year, backing that up with a 33-touchdown, seven-interception season and leading the Bearcats to the college football playoff. But it's the stability, it's the consistency, it's the relevancy, it's, you know, all reliable. You knew when the Bearcats took the field in Nippert Stadium. I think about um, this senior class, I think about anybody that started their careers in 2018 with the Bearcats. I think about the Rally Cats, the student section, the student body, the ruckus. If you went to Cincinnati from 2018 through this year, you just graduated. Congratulations, by the way. Congra uh, sincere congratulations to all the University of Cincinnati graduates. A lot of my friends uh, from my staff at Bearcast Media and Rally Cats and Running Club and all the organizations I was a part of. If you went to Cincinnati the last four years, that was your time there. That was your time span there. You never saw a losing game at Nippert Stadium. That is remarkable to think about. Heck, I only... I saw a lot of wins in Nippert Stadium during my time at Cincinnati because Desmond Ritter brought that. It was the comfort feeling of they uh, that it, it did not matter how the games played out. You knew Cincinnati was going to win. Case in point, senior day this past season. Oh, there were rumblings that maybe SMU could pull off the upset, and I'll never forget um, Ed Sakow, good friend of mine from ASAP Sports, told me before the game in the press box, he goes, you know, I hear they got a, you know, something up their sleeves on the first play. It's going to be a, a long, deep pass to Tyler Scott. And sure enough, that first play, Bearcats, by the way, uh, forced SMU in a three and out in the first possession. First play of the Bearcats offensive possession, first offensive possession of the game, 56 yards. That was not, not a good snap there. There we go. Oh, that was about the same, but you get the point. 
56 yard pass to Tyler Scott. And any doubt that S any inkling of a thought of the thought that SMU could pull off the upset was gone. Because the Bearcats just immediately put you at ease. Ritter to Scott, just like they did against Miami. If you had any anxiety over that game, which if you did, I would really want to know why, because we kick Miami's ass every year, which we will again this year. That's what Ritter's going to bring to the Falcons. It's what Matt Ryan brought, and I think it could be a seamless transition. I really do, because I and, and I keep going back and forth with my assignment editor where I work down here in Macon, Georgia. I keep going back and forth with him, and I say, I mean, this team is better than you think it is. I mean, and he goes, they're not trying to win. I'm like, James, they are most certainly trying to win. No team in the NFL tries to tank. Case in point, the Bengals didn't tank in 2019, and they still got Joe Burrow. Look where they're Look where they are now. Uh, the New York Jets were 0-13 in 2020. They were at the L.A. Rams, won that game, and then beat the Cleveland Browns, almost ruined their playoff hopes that, that week. Don't tell me NFL teams are trying to tank. They're not. It's not in anyone's DNA because the average NFL career is under four years. Think about that for a minute. No one's trying to lose. Yeah. So Desmond Ritter will bring stability to the Falcons. What I mean by that is, I don't know if he's going to win a Super Bowl. First off, he's wearing number four. Hopefully this number four in Atlanta will work out and not get traded to Green Bay or somewhere. Uh, like some other quarterback named, what, Brett Favor? Brett Favre? Yeah, him. Uh, which, by the way, I think Ritter is a gunslinger. Not the gunslinger like Brett Favre. We know he that, that nickname is reserved for him. But I look at Ritter and kind of the looseness he plays with and the fun that he you know he has on the field, the charismatic leadership that he has, yeah, you got to love that. And I don't know if it's going to lead the Falcons to a Super Bowl. I think first they got to you know, think about, hey, getting to a spot where they can maybe make a run of the playoffs. You heard Aaron Freeman locked on Falcons on my show earlier this week say, yeah, you know, maybe the Falcons can contend for playoffs, but they may not be there yet this year. But, you know, Maybe Ritter is that quarterback that can elevate them to a playoff team sooner rather than later. But the stability aspect of the Falcons, I think, always being relevant, always being competitive, a contender for a playoff spot, that's what Ritter is going to bring to the Atlanta Falcons. Up next, I have a fun um, topic for segment three, and it was actually something I saw five minutes before I started recording this episode. True story, fun fact. Coming up next on Lockdown Bearcats. But first, I'm going to tell you all about betonline.net, your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball, and this weekend's run to the roses at the Kentucky Derby is back. I love that race. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information from live betting to the playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. Bet Online, where the game starts. You want to talk about bets? I'm going to put a bet here that more people will attend the Kentucky Derby on Saturday than will attend all the com- all the remaining Reds home games combined this season. I'm going to I'm going to put that on record. You can clip me for whatever you want to do. More people will attend the Kentucky Derby this Saturday. Tomorrow, excuse me. Than attend the remaining home Reds games combined. So that's about 150,000 155,000 I think uh Churchill Downs capacity. There will be more fans at the at that at the race tomorrow than at all the remaining Reds home games combined this season. Clip me on that if you want to. Alex Frank here with you, Locked On Bearcats, May 6th, 2022. So I got a fun segment uh, prepared for this final segment of today's show and the week, and it's about the Bengals. I know this is a Bearcats podcast, but we've spent so much time leading up to the draft and then this week during the draft that I wanted to touch on something that I saw on NFL.com. Nick Shook, who writes for the website, very good, love listening to him. Um, on the after you listen to this show, you can go check out the Around the NFL podcast as part of the NFL uh, Podcast Network. Really great podcast. Dan Hansis, Greg Rosenthal, Mark Sessler, and the guys 
are tremendous. Um, just really making it simple to hear them break down the NFL. So Nick Shook recently uh, wrote for NFL.com the 10 top 10 games of the 2022 NFL season. And I saw the headline, I'm like, ooh, there's going to be some Bengals games on there. And there are, but there's only one. It's number seven on the list, and it's against the Ravens. It's the only game that made the list involving the Cincinnati Bengals. What? So you're telling me that Burrow versus Brady's not one of the top 10 games of the year. You're telling me that Dolphins 49ers, woof. Browns at Texans, big woof. Jaguar, Jaguars at Jets, no comment. All right, that's that's behind the ravens Bengals game, by the way. And I'm not saying the ravens Bengals game is going to be that. And it's the game in Cincinnati that they mentioned. Which, by the way, could be a really interesting game. I think that'll be a primetime Sunday night game, potentially. That has, I, I mean, the Ravens are going to be healthier this year. They're going to be in contention once again. They were 8-3 before Lamar Jackson got hurt. They were 8-4, actually. Lamar Jackson doesn't get hurt. I'm not sure the Bengals win the division. And it's going to be very interesting this year with the Bengals roster better than it was last year. With the Ravens healthier, yes, they lost Marquise Brown, but they get a lot of key members back on defense. They get Lamar Jackson back, who we know when he's on the field. Say what you want about him. He's a top 10 quarterback, I believe. That could be a fun matchup. But the matchup's after that. So you got Rams, Buccaneers. Okay, fine. Those two teams played a thriller in the playoffs last year. Chargers, Raiders. I can, Yeah, I can agree with that because they played a great regular season finale last year. The Raiders got better. The Chargers got better too. Packers, Bills, fine. Chiefs, Buccaneers, boring. It's happening too frequently. Fine though. Broncos, Seahawks. What? Seattle's going to suck this year. And that's the number two game that you're most looking forward to? Yeah, all right. So you're not looking forward to Josh Allen versus Joe Burrow. You're not looking forward to Patrick Mahomes versus Joe Burrow, who, by the way, Joe Burrow's 2-0 against. You're not looking forward to, um, yeah, the uh, Burrow versus Deshaun, which, spoiler alert, Burrow's going to win both meetings, I do believe, because I don't think the Browns going to be as good as people think. So we think those games – or Bengals Cowboys, Burrow versus Dak. We're not looking forward to those games, but we're looking forward to Broncos Seahawks. And the number one game that they have is Bills Chiefs, obviously, after they played maybe the greatest playoff game ever last year. But how are the Cincinnati? Th- this is another sign of disrespect to the Bengals. It really is. The Cincinnati Bengals last year, that you can say, oh, they got lucky. They were healthy. The rest of the division had injuries and. You know, blah, blah, blah. The Titans quarterback at his worst game of the year and blah, blah, blah. Um, Did you see the Bengals trail the Chiefs 21-3 to on the road in the AFC Championship game? Did you see them hold Patrick Mahomes to 33 passing yards in the second half of an overtime combined in the AFC Championship game? Did you see Joe Burrow withstand nine sacks by the Titans defense and make the game-winning throw to Jamar Chase to set up the game-winning field goal? Did you see... The Bengals put 41 points up on the Ravens twice and the Steelers and outscored the Steelers 65-20 to and the Ravens 82-38. to Did you see that? Because I sure as hell did. Oh, but they lost to the Browns twice. Yeah, that happens. The second game didn't even count, practically. I didn't even care if the Bengals won that game. Browns fans might, because whenever they win a game, they always hoot and holler, oh my God, we're so good. Yeah, shut up. You're not. Anyway, how are not more how are the Bengals not on this list more frequently? There are matchups this year that are going to be really good. I mean, even matchups like the Dolphins and the Saints or the Falcons or the Jets, New England, there are matchups outside of the big time matchups that could be really interesting. That's what you get when you get a first place schedule. I mean, that is how good I believe this team can be this year. I think they're going to be really good. I think they're I think they can and I think will win the division because they have the best quarterback. I think they can very easily go back to the Super Bowl 
I shouldn't say very easily, though, because the AFC is loaded. But at the same time, I'm not taking any quarterback besides Josh Allen over Joe Burrow. And I stand by that. You know why? Because Herbert has never been to the playoffs. Because Mahomes is 0-2 against Joe Burrow and just lost his best receiver. Um, Russell Wilson is 3-5 and five in the playoffs since Super Bowl 49, and he's playing with a first-time head coach this year, playing under a first-year head coach, first-time head coach Nathaniel Hackett in Denver. Uh, Lamar Jackson, I, I say he's a top-10 quarterback, but at the same time, he's inconsistent. Deshaun Watson has to play football in two years, and he's going to have a six-game suspension, and... I think Joe Burrow is a better quarterback than him. So I just think, why are people still disrespecting the Bengals? Why are their games you're not looking forward to, but yet, but yet you're looking forward to Broncos Seahawks because it's Russell Wilson's reunion in Seattle? Oh, whoop de do. Whoop de freaking do. Seriously. I mean, games that I'm looking forward to this year in the NFL. Yes, Bills Chiefs, I will agree with that. Rams Buccaneers, hell yeah. By the way, the Bills play the Rams this year. That game's not on the list. Green Bay Buffalo, sure, I'm looking forward to that game. Bengals Buccaneers, Burrow versus Brady. There are comparisons of Joe Burrow to Tom Brady. Yeah, that's a thing. Bengals Chiefs, they played two thrillers last year. The Chiefs, they were led by double digits at halftime, in both those games, and they lost them both. Bengals, Bills. I mean, that could be a shootout of extremes. And yet you're looking more forward to Jaguars, Jets, and Chargers, Raiders, which both games could be really good. By the way, Broncos, Raiders didn't make the list. Broncos, Chargers didn't make the list. It's just a very curious list. And the Bengals are only on there one time against the Ravens? A team that the Bengals kicked their ass twice last year? That makes no sense to me. It really doesn't. It really does make no sense to me. Because there are a lot of games that I think are going to be, A, primetime games, and B, I think really good games. Bengals-Buccaneers, Bengals-Saints in New Orleans, Bengals-Bills, Bengals-Ravens, yes, Bengals-Chiefs, heck, Bengals-Cowboys. Bengals Titans could be good. I mean, the Titans still have Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry and a really good defense, as we know. Anyway, thank you for making Lockdown Bearcats your first listen every day. As you, yeah, for making it your first listen every day. Now, make your second listen Lockdown Big 12. Get all of your daily Big 12 news in less than 30 minutes with Big 12 expert Josh Neighbors. It's free and available everywhere you get your podcast. I did not mention this at the outset, and I knew there was something I didn't. So I'll say it now. If you're watching this episode on YouTube, don't forget to, that's the Lockdown Bearcats channel on YouTube, to subscribe. And then like and share a comment on this video. If you're downloading from an audio platform, Apple, Apple, Spotify, or Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast, don't forget to like, share a comment, and give it a rating because all of that Helps more Bearcats fans like you find this podcast. Uh, as always, you can follow me on Twitter at Frankie underscore 90 with two N's and an ATI. You can follow me on Instagram, AlexFrank9 underscore, or email me at alex 3 frank at gmail.com. Next week, leading off with Russ Heldman of all Bearcats and Sports Illustrated on the Bearcats on the Bearcats draft class, Rayvon Griffith, Landers, Nolly, and more. And then we're going to get into bold predictions for the first position group we're going to look at for the offseason in football. And I'm going to start my roster rankings 1 through 100. I believe it's 101. 1 through 101. Is it that? I think it is. Of the 101 players on the Bearcats roster, we're going to rank them 101 or whatever, 100-something to 1. So that's going to be fun. That's going to go throughout the offseason. So much to get to, and by the way, I'm struck and fascinated by this, and I'm going to cross-promote Locked On Razorbacks, hosted by John Neighbors. I was told in our meeting last night that he is having a former president, U.S. president, on our show, on his show, a former U.S. president on his show, and if you think about it, Arkansas 
you probably know which president, which former president he is having on his show. I can't wait to hear that. I mean, heck, I'm now inspired to get Jerry Springer on this show. Well, wouldn't that be something? Anyway, thanks for making Lockdown Bearcats your first listen every day. I'm Alex Frank for the Lockdown Bearcats. Have a great weekend. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, including my mom, Debbie, a proud University of Cincinnati alum and loyal listener of the show, subscriber on YouTube, and listener on audio as well. Thank you for listening to Lockdown Bearcats. Have a great rest of your Friday and weekend, Mother's Day weekend, and I will talk to you all on Monday.